Hey, how's it going, guys? Today we're going to be talking about buff headwear. Uh, give you a little history. Uh, buffs originated in Spain, and they were the idea of a motorcyclist by the name of Juan Rojas, uh, who was looking for some type of headwear to wear while he was riding. He wasn't satisfied with the choices out there, so he did a little bit of research, and he came across a microfiber that he found to be breathable, moisture-wicking, and wind-resistant. So he took that microfiber, and he developed a loom that would weave the headwear in a tubular shape without any discernible seams so that you wouldn't have any pressure headaches or pressure spots when you're wearing this. Now how I found out about this was I was in Nepal a couple of years ago and I was doing some trekking in the Himalayas and uh, I was on a two week trek to Mount Everest Base Camp and I met this dude and he had an extra buff he was wearing one, he had an extra one. He let me wear it and to tell you the truth that thing saved my life. I wanted to buy it off of him but he wouldn't let me. Uh, basically for every day for two weeks I would wear that buff around my neck and then whenever it got too cold I would pull it up and wear it in front of my face and around my neck because it's long enough for that and it would keep the wind chill from chapping my face and my lips and it would keep the heat of my breath inside while I was wearing it so I mean it's invaluable anybody who wears a scarf and has it come undone on them all the time you might want to check out buffs because once you wear this around your neck it's so soft and so comfortable to wear and it's since it's a tubular design, there's no way it's going to fall off. Uh, it there's a ton of ways to actually wear this, uh, besides around your neck or on your head as a headband. Uh, I won't go into all of them now. There's actually like a bunch of links on YouTube that I'll put on the sidebar on the right. But uh, there's a bunch of videos that show you like different ways that you can wear them. For example, if you turn it inside out and grab it from the opposite ends, and grab it like so, bam! You have a bandana. Put your head here, and there's a little knot in the back. And then another way to wear it, since I already have it inside out, is if you twist it here in the middle and bring the top down like so. Sorry, it's weird to try to do this while looking through the camera viewfinder. Voila! You got a skull cap or a beanie. Pretty cool, eh? There's a ton of ways to wear these, um, so it's up to your preferences. Just uh, check out the Buff website, or um, just type in Buff Headwear on YouTube, and you'll find some other videos on the different ways you can wear them. There's a ton. I don't use them all. I always usually just wear this around my neck because it is so soft and so comfortable. Uh, during those two weeks, whenever this got dirty or sweaty or smelly or whatever, I would just take this off, take some soap, wring it out in the river somewhere, uh, squeeze all the moisture out of it, and then wear it around my neck while wet, and then within like 10-15 minutes it would be completely dry. Uh, I don't watch television anymore, but uh, I've been told that Buff had a special deal with Survivor, so all the contestants on the Survivor TV show had Buffs with like the little Survivor logo on it. So, I mean, if you see them wearing like this red and orange kind of Buff thing around their neck, that's the actual original Buff. They come in a variety of sizes and shapes and colors. Uh, the standard size is, let me actually get my little tape measure here. Uh, it's about... 19 inches in length and about, I'd say, 19 and a half inches in width. Uh, it's hard to tell because these are elastic and because these do stretch. Oh, by the way, um, if you pull it lengthwise, it has a little bit of give, but it doesn't really like stretch, which is good. However, if you pull it widthwise, it stretches a lot and very soft. Uh, by the way, as I was saying uh, before, there are a bunch of different varieties. There's a polar buff that uh, is fleece lined for really cold environments. There's a uh, reflective buff that you can wear where the pattern reflects light really well in case you're wearing this and you want to bike at night. There's even a uh, buff where the microfiber is impregnated with a chemical that's uh, insect resistant. So it repels insects and it lasts for like something like 70 washes before it wears away. So, I mean, there's a bunch of different types, but this is the standard size buff. Uh, let's. This is an older one that I got. I actually got this in a used gear sale. Uh, if you look at most buffs, what you'll see is there's a design, and then the interior is white. By the way, these don't fade no matter how many times you wash them, so that's a good thing. The interior is white. I got this at a used gear sale, and it was this bright key lime green that I hated. But I mean, it was used, so I got it for something like two, three bucks. Uh, I hated the color, but I had a friend. She was like dying a sweater black, so I asked her to throw this in there. So it ended up turning the interior gray, and the outside became this ni nice dark forest green, which I kind of like. So that's what you got there. If there's anything I don't like about buffs, it's the fact that, uh, well, there's actually two things I don't like. Number one, it's kind of hard to find solid colors. If you go to stores or you go online, 
they're always sold out of the solid colors, and uh, you'll have to pick some sort of pattern, so I try to find like a more subtle pattern, or at least a cool one that I like. And the second thing is the price. They're a little bit pricey. Um, they run anywhere from 20 to $25. Um, so, I mean, you might be thinking, 25 bucks for a piece of cloth, and that's true. However, once you put this on, you're going to see why, and it's the fact that if you're going to be walking or doing a lot of trail running or hiking, if you're wearing this every day, really it's going to be worth it because it's something that you are going to be using every day and it because it is so durable and so comfortable. So, um, actually, in speaking about the price, let me bring this up. Looks like a buff, right? I actually picked this up in Singapore and this is a ripoff. I was walking by and I was like, oh, three bucks for a buff. But, even though it looks like a buff and has pretty much the same measurements, when you touch the material, and it's hard for me to explain how, is um, when you touch the material, you'll feel the difference. This is a lot softer than this is. It's not like this is rough by any means, but this, a lot more soft. And the stretch is a lot better on the original one. So, I mean, if you're really strapped for cash, I mean, I don't want to support like the use of counterfeit stuff, but if you're really strapped for cash, you might want to give these a try. However, seriously, after you wear the original one, you're going to realize that this isn't nearly as comfortable to wear and you might want to just shell the extra money. Um, a friend of mine had this really good phrase. He said, uh, buy cheap, buy twice. And I think that's true. I mean, you buy quality gear, you're going to use it for the rest of your life, and you're going to know it. You buy something cheap, it's going to break down, it's going to wear on you, or you're just not going to like it because the fit and finish isn't nearly as good as the original, and then you're going to have to buy it again. So, I mean, that's something to think about. So, this is a counterfeit one. Also, you'll look here, things like the edges, you can see that uh, they didn't really take the time to cut it very well. You got like these rough edges right here when they just cut it off of the machine. You don't really find that on the actual original buffs. You'll see a little bit of that, but they tend to roll a little bit more in. And it's so much softer and thinner. And it's a little bit more, like, it's a lot more breathable than the counterfeit. So yeah, that's my little review of buff headwear. Check them out. You can get them anywhere, actually. You can get them on eBay, Amazon.com, or the actual Buff website. And I think uh, if you have orders over $35 or $40, it's free shipping off the Buff website, so you might give them a shot. Um, and plus, by going on the Buff website, you'll see all the different designs that they have. Can't recommend it enough. Uh, get one. Try it out, especially if you're going to be doing a lot of walking or hiking and you want to have your face covered and you want to protect yourself from the windshield. So that's my review of Buff Headwear. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a good day.